my name is David Fine. Welcome to the Watch Your Lip Fast Fish Beach Fishing Series where we're going to teach you how to become successful beach fishermen down here in South Florida. Guys, today we're going to do, cover a topic that is so important, how to catch bait. We're going to go over some ideas, help you be successful in how to catch bait. Check this out. Without Without a shadow of a doubt, a good cast net is going to be one of your best friends when fishing on the beach because uh, I typically never buy bait at all. I mean, I go with my cast net uh, and show up to a beach and we're going to catch some kind of bait with a cast net almost guaranteed every time. Not always, but most of the time you catch your own bait. Uh, a five or six foot cast net is all you need, guys. Um, I wouldn't bother going with like an 8, 10, or 12 foot net. Not on the beach. You don't need that big of a net because you're just casting in, you know, shin deep or ankle deep water sometimes. So you don't need to open it up that big. Uh, it's not necessary. So guys, get a net with some fine mesh. I would get quarter inch holes uh, in the mesh. Um, fast sinking lead weights. Uh, don't get those plastic ones. They don't work as well, and uh, and that'll be your best friend. You take care of your net. Um, make sure you clean it out every time. Don't leave gilled bait fish in your net and in your bucket and bring them home and leave them in your garage. That is a bad mistake. Kids, don't leave bait fish in your net. Clean them out. Okay. Uh, help your parents out with this. Okay. If you're if you're watching, so your cast netting bait guys uh, really helps to uh to to know what to look for so you're looking for sardines you're looking for pilchards you're looking for um silver sides or mullet all these things croakers are on the beach on the shoreline all these things uh you got to learn how to find your fish and so a good pair of polarized sunglasses will help because it'll cut the glare out and you'll be able to see a lot more clearly in the water and locate your bait fish a lot easier you're looking for little tiny pops on the top when, uh, when bait fish like pilchards are probably the most common fish, bait fish that we use on the beach. Pilchards start showing up in April and they're pretty much on the beaches all the way through uh, the beginning of September and then the fall mullet run comes, right? But pilchards are there uh, and so you gotta learn how to find them. Sometimes when they're not really being chased by predatory fish, they're not on the surface. So you gotta learn how to look for them. You gotta have your polarized glasses, and a lot of times they come up and they pop on the top and they have these little tiny little pops on the top and you'll start to see them. Um, you'll start to get to recognize what that looks like and you can go find them. Or you'll start seeing the flashes on the top when they're, when they're being chased and you'll start seeing these little silver flashes on the top of the water. When you got really clear water, you can start seeing color changes. It looks like a big shadow that's moving and looks like this big living cloud that's in the water. Those are typically bait fish. Uh, th those might be pilchards, they might be mullet, they might be sardines, they might be uh, silver sides. So guys, look for those types of signs. Uh, they'll show you, the bait fish will show themselves. And especially if stuff is attacking them, if you got snook or jacks or tarpon and they're crashing on the baits, you're gonna start, you're gonna start seeing activity on the top of the water, you'll know where to cast, very, very important. Uh, if you don't like cast nets and you, you have a hard time with them, we're going to have some how-to videos on how to throw cast nets in the future. Uh, a sabiki rig is a great tool for you to use. Uh, it, it's they're, they're a little expensive. They're a little annoying. But, oh, man, do they work. And so you can attach this sabiki rig. It's a six-hook rig typically that comes in a little package. And, um, and they work. They catch fish but they do what they're designed to do. They hook stuff. I would get a fluorocarbon number four sabiki. You can get the red one or the green. The, they come with a red bead or a green bead. Uh, you can get either one, both work great. Uh, but the, those sabikis, those little tiny quills are meant to look like little microscopic shrimp. And that's what the pilchards and other bait fish eat. And so they, they gobble them up. So very, very important. I would bring a D hooker. Uh, very important to be able to quickly get your bait off the hook, off the hook, and um, it's a great tool to have in your toolbox as well. You can pick one of those up at a tackle store for a couple bucks. Uh, how do you store your sabikis? Now that is a question that has been uh, plaguing fishermen since sabikis were invented, and so some people use 
Uh, some people just throw them away because it's just a pain. I like to use something like this. Guys, this is just a little section of a pool noodle and you can actually put your hooks in. These are larger hooks, but you can see what I'm doing here. You can put your hooks in the pool noodle foam, cut a little section of the pool noodle, and then you wrap your sabiki around and put all the hooks inside of the foam so that they don't hook people and they don't hook your clothing and put holes in your clothing. How annoying is that, right? So very, very easy way to do it. Some people use something called a sabiki rod. Guys, this is actually a rod that the line goes through the middle of the rod and the rod is hollow. And I'm not gonna you know, pull too much out, but the, the actual sabiki fits inside of this rod and it keeps the sabiki from uh, hooks, from hooking stuff. So that's a cool tool. Not many people have them. It's a little bit more of a splurge, another thing to bring. I prefer using a cast net. Um, I almost never bring sabikis to the beach because they rust after a couple times you use them. It gets expensive. Uh, I prefer cast netting my bait. But if you have a challenge with the cast net, a sabiki is a surefire way to find some kind of bait fish. Another tactic you can use, uh, some people use small jigs and they'll actually tip the small jigs with squid or shrimp and they'll throw them out on the beach and you can catch blue runners and small jacks that way. And that's actually a great way to catch those bigger baits, like a blue runner that you would use to, to hook a big barracuda or a, a tarpon or a shark. That's a great way to get it. Gold hooks, uh, little goldies, kind of like a sabiki, same type of thing, but you can buy a, a package of them for a lot cheaper than you can a sabiki pack and keep that those little goldies in your tackle box. We call them goldies. And you can tie a couple of those on your line, uh, typically a lighter line. It would probably be anywhere from four pound test to 10 pound test. The lighter, the better for some certain species of, of bait fish. But you can tip those with little pieces of squid or shrimp and catch some things like croakers. You can catch little tiny whiting or, or the jacks or sand perch or something like that. And that can be a great way to catch bait as well. So that's some of the tactics for some of the smaller baits. Some people want to catch larger bait fish. You want to catch a blue runner. You want to catch a lady fish. You want to catch something a little bit more meaty, big bait, big fish. Guys, remember that. You're going to learn more about that in future videos. But what you can do is you can get a guppy rig with some circle hooks, like number two, two O circle hooks with a weight on the bottom and just tip them with squid or, you know, get like a pilcher and cut the pilcher in half and put those little chunks of pilcher on your guppy rig, toss it out and you can catch ladyfish, you can catch um, blue runners and little jacks and things like that. And then you put those bad boys out and get ready to hang on to your rod because you're gonna get some big fish. Like changing gears from bait fish to shellfish, uh, crabs are actually one of the best baits to use. Uh, it's a, the action when you're fishing with big calico crabs is a little slower, but it can really yield major awesome fish like a big permit or tarpon, or, you know, you can catch cobia or, you know, very, very impressive fish when you're using a big crab up north, a little bit further north of us, uh, redfish and black drum. And so crabs are a great bait. You can bring a crab trap. Uh, we're going to hold another video on how to catch the calico crabs or just a piece of raw chicken. If you really want to keep it simple, uh, put a raw piece of chicken on a, on a, on a hook fishing hook with a mask and snorkel and a dip net and you can catch your calico crabs. You can use a sand flea rake and catch yourself some sand fleas. Guys, sand fleas are all over the place in Southeast Florida and they can make great bait. We catch pompano, jacks, snapper, bonefish on, uh, on, on sand fleas. So great bait to use, very readily available. But guys, no matter what bait you use, it's so important to have a good live well aerator system. So if you're going smaller, you have a five gallon bucket, you have a little bubbler, you know, with some D batteries or whatever, and you, you know, that's great. That works fine. But if you're, if you're doing more of a production and you have a bunch of people fishing and putting their hands in your bucket, that five gallon bucket can typically only hold so many bait fish. And so you want to go something a little bit larger. It's up to you. I have a, uh, a little bit of a larger bait well system, probably more of like a 20 gallon system. And my bet, it hooks up to a 12 volt battery. And so that works very well. But if you're going to keep baits alive, 
Uh, one of the important things that you gotta do, every so often you gotta change out the water, make sure they get fresh water because they uh, bait fish will release toxins inside the water. And even though you have an aerator in there, uh, if you're not freshing out, you know, dumping out the old water and putting in it with, with another bucket, putting in new fresh water, your bait are gonna die. Uh, so keep your bait fish alive and fresh. That is super, super important. So guys, that's about all the time we have for today. We're gonna get into how to catch each of those specific types of bait fish a little bit more in depth. But guys, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Comment down below what video you'd like to see next and we will do our best to put that together for you. Um, and hit the bell for that notifications, man. We're gonna let you know when we have more of our How To Fast Fish series videos coming out. Guys, take care, God bless, stay safe, watch your lips.